Vince Gill live on stage here at O2. Welcome along. This is Bob Harris Country, where tonight we're bringing you highlights of the Country to Country Festival. This is where Nashville comes to the O2. We have an incredible lineup for you. Later, we'll be hearing more from Vince. We'll be hearing from Little Big Town and from Tim McGraw. But first, this is Christian Bush. <laughs>
Christian Bush is here with us now, and uh, this has proved to be something of an extended European stay for you, Christian, isn't it? It has. It's been a whole bunch of uh, wonderful, lucky accidents, and then I just kept staying. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because it it was the songwriter circle that that brought you over here, what, three or four weeks ago, originally, wasn't it? And you did. How many gigs were there on that tour altogether? Six or seven, give or take. You know, it, it started to blur together. You know, songwriters drink a lot, so <laughs> I wasn't really as prepared as I am for my r- arena stuff. <laughs> those, it, those, mean, those guys are different. So this is just a pause in the history of Sugarland at the moment, really. That's isn't right. It? We really try to be real sensitive to the way life blows you left or right, or forward or backward, and this is what's happening here right now. You know, it just it just so happens that I get to go play a bunch of. Music. Jennifer's at home taking care of her baby, and it's a wonderful time for me to go and and make more songs, which is what I do every day. Absolutely. Country to country, then. How did you decide to build the set? What songs? Uh, well, it's, that's a good question. Um, people know me from Sugarland, so there's there's a part of it that needs to be songs from Sugarland, and uh, that Jennifer and I have written. But there are songs you may know by a voice that you may not, mm. which is really interesting in a lot of ways. It, it helps. Uh, helps you give a little more depth to a song that that you might have pictured one way and I'm giving you another angle on it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I have my own material that's constantly evolving. So in, in festival shows like this, we all share the same production. So you don't get the explosions and the big things that fall from the ceiling and the big lights and the, the big thing. You get some of them, but we all share them on these festivals. So your performance has everything to do with the sound of your song. So, uh, you know, you'll you'll be hearing uh, three or four songs, you know, I mean, you don't know uh, a couple songs, you 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 know, and then uh, I even put in a Springsteen song just for the fun of it today. Uh, I woke up. I was like, ah, I want to play a Bruce song. Well, they blew up the chicken man in Philly last night and they blew up his house, too. And on the boardwalk, they're getting ready for a fight. Gonna see what them racket boys can do. Trouble's busting in from out of state. And the DA can't get no relief. Gonna be a rumble down on a promenade. And the gambling commission's in by the skin of his teeth, baby. Everything dies, baby, that's a fact. you have a pretty meet me tonight in Atlantic City yeah, got me job put my money away I got this 
greatest his country is Tim McGraw. Well, I got me a job, but they're so hard to find. Down here it's winners and losers don't get caught on the wrong side of that line. I'm tired of coming out on the losing end. So last night I met this guy to do a little favor for him. He said, everything dies, maybe that's too fat. Maybe everything that dies someday comes back. so great to hear Christian Bush on stage at the O2. We're here for Country to Country. Our music coming up from Vince Gill and Little Big Town in just a couple of seconds time. Simon Mayo presents the Radio 2 Book Club. The Book Club, introducing you to the authors. I'm delighted to welcome Sir Terry Pratchett. Edward Kelsey Moore joins us live from Chicago. Ian Rankin's looking very knowledgeable, actually, at this point. <laughs> and the authors to you. Thank you for having my absolute favourite writer on the show. This is David Hurt in Durham. I love his books, love the stories. I'm very excited about going out and buying this book this weekend. It's fantastic. I mean, I am so grateful for people's reactions like that. Join us for the next chapter in the Radio 2 Book Club when we talk to best-selling author Jodie Pico. Simon Mayo and the Radio 2 Book Club. Monday from 5. And download an extract from Jodie's latest work now at the Radio 2 website. Suddenly, it's breakthrough. Suddenly, the wheel is rolling, and it's just such a fantastic pleasure to welcome them here to the O2 and welcome them to London. Ladies and gentlemen, Little Big Town.
So we're here in the fab room, <laughs> backstage at O2, with Little Big Town. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Oh, the secret fab room. The yeah, secret fab room. You wouldn't know it's back here. There's even a more secret room <laughs> back there. This is the Justin Bieber area. <laughs> <laughs> so We're going to stay out of that room. <laughs> this is fab, by the way. There's all kinds yes. of things people would... Green M&M's, orange M&M's, <laughs> purple yeah. M&M's, <laughs> and blue. Yeah. And in decanters. <laughs> wow. So, Philip, how are you enjoying London? How, Very it much. It's been a wonderful trip so far. So we're, we're so excited. They're all leading up to this night. So this yeah. is what we've been looking forward to. Because it seems to me that this is all part of a really sort of good way of b coming into Europe now wow. and beginning to sort of focus a little bit on Europe. Mm. Yes. We've been wanting to do this for a long time, and now, you know, the opportunity is here, and we just couldn't be more thrilled. You know, the record with Tornado, the album doing so well, and, and just the, all of the success just feels like a big snowball effect for us. And coming over here has just been so warm and welcoming, so thank you so much for the warm welcome. Well, the way that the wheel has been rolling for you all, you know, I mean, the last time we saw each other, wasn't it, was me managing to drop and smash one of the CMA awards. I, I want to correct you. It was me who dropped it, <laughs> Bob. But, I mean, it, you know, there's been Grammy success since then as well. Yeah. I mean, it's congratulations on it all. Thank well, congrats Thank to you on you. yes. your CMA win. It, it, but it is, you must feel just fantastic. And all that work that you've put in through through the years is now really, yeah. really paying off. Yeah, we've been a band for over a decade now. And, and uh, the way that this year has played out, we, we couldn't be more grateful and, and appreciative. Um, it's We've had a, an amazing journey, and it's just gotten better and better. And this year, it's just capped it off in the Grammy and the ACM vocal group, uh, a CMA vocal group award and, and four ACM nominations coming up. And it's just crazy. It's amazing. We're so grateful. <laughs> well, you deserve it. It's Thank fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of that, looking at the UK, you know, strategy for, for coming over here, maybe what, what, what are the plans? Well, we were looking at the calendar last night trying to figure out when we could come back because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to miss out on this great opportunity of singing for country fans today over here and then not come back for a while, you know. So we were looking and um, we'll just get with our people when we get back home and wedge out a little part of the calendar where we can come back and do a full little big town show for you guys. That would be fantastic. Thank I can't you. wait for the set tonight and uh, just Thank brilliant. You. Enjoy, enjoy. We oh, will. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Screen door and looking out. Oh, I can 
to see you now. I'll read you like an open book. I'm standing on the edge, but I can't look down. It feel better if you just lie. in Nashville is so warm, it's so friendly and amongst that community this next fella, you know is one of the most friendly one of the warmest people you could ever possibly meet he's one of the most successful one of the most important artists in country music history and he just happens to be one of the greatest guitar players on the planet <laughs> ladies and gentlemen please Vince Gill. Won't 
So we're backstage now in uh, the secret Justin Bieber room <laughs> <laughs> with Vince Gill. How long has it been since you were last here? I don't know. I don't even know. Um, my last trip over, I was over in, in Ireland for two days and was very apologetic to those people over there. I said, you, you, you won't believe this, but playing over here in this part of the world has been my favorite thing I've ever done. Like when I play here, I play in Ireland or Scotland, I just feel like the love for the music has more depth. It, mm. It's a deeper, richer uh, response than, than I normally get at home. And it's really a remarkable feeling. And uh, maybe one of the reasons I haven't been back as much as I didn't want to ever lose that that remembrance and that uh, feeling of special. feeling of, of yeah. what it was really like. Because it was, it was unbelievable. I've played an awful lot of places in 40 years. And to say that playing over here was my favorite thing to do is pretty, pretty, pretty strong statement, you know. And, and it was just true. And um, but I told everybody, I said, look, I got remarried in 2000. I'm happy. And Amy's pretty smoking hot. I don't like to leave home. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, you know, I don't travel as much, you know. And, and I never had the mindset um, or the personality to think I could conquer the world, mm -hmm. you know. So. I've been pretty, pretty, pretty lax about getting around the world and really seeing what what my music could do. But I do know that I'm well respected over here, and it has gone unnoticed. And just a, as a final thought, in terms of the members of you on stage, Vince, the um, guitar festival that Eric Clapton mm. holds, Chicago. Two in Chicago, one in Dallas, and the next one in about three weeks is in New York City. I mean, if anybody looked as if they were having the time of their life, it was you on stage. <laughs> yeah, you'd have, you'd have been hard-pressed to find somebody more thrilled in that bunch than me. You know, <laughs> I think one reason is I was kind of the token country guy, mm. the one player that, that Eric seems to love from that world. And that was really, that was pretty overwhelming to me that he called and invited me to be a part of those. And... It came at a really special time, too, because that my, my records had, had started to slide a little bit, and they weren't playing them like they used to, and and that was waning a bit. And, and for him to call and say, hey, I'm having this guitar festival, and I'm only inviting guitar players I like, and for somebody of his stature to see me as I'd always hoped the world would see me was really mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. and made me feel like a musician all over again. And I'm really grateful to him that he keeps inviting me. Fantastic. <laughs>
Absolutely amazing guitar playing of Vince Gill. Playing on stage at the O2, we're here for Country to Country. And if you want to see any of the photographs, pick up any of the backstage interviews, gossip, general thoughts, there is, of course, our Twitter account, which is at B Harris Country, or you can see the pictures on the Radio 2 website, bbc.co.uk slash Radio 2. And our headliner coming up, music from Tim McGraw in a couple of seconds' time. Every Monday night on BBC Radio 2, I play you my pick of the best in rhythm and blues. Next week, we bring you a special programme featuring one of the world's great guitar players, Joe Bonamassa. Paul Jones with a Joe Bonamassa special. A different sort of hour, too, as we chart the rise and rise of Joe in the UK, marking his progress in Britain from the borderline to the Albert Hall through the sessions he's recorded for this programme since 2006. You guys have all the goods on me. you got, like, names of arrangements that I don't even know exist. It's awesome. It's the yeah. beauty of the BBC. Join me, Paul Jones, for a one-hour special with Joe Bonamassa. We're going to do a whole retrospective of all the stuff we've done. Monday night from 7, here on BBC Radio 2. Right with me, she 
said adios. So I said hello. Don Julio, top chef, self help remedy. Shines on a fool like me, and you pulled the plug on what I thought was love. I got just enough juice to forget about you and squeeze this line. I can see the ocean, well, I can feel the breeze. I almost can't remember how she left me down here. Shines on a fool like me. Shines on a fool like me. Great to see you, Tim. You too. Good to see you. I mean, look forward to looking, to seeing to you. looking at you in person again. For, it's been a long time since I saw you. Last That's time. right. Last October. Yeah. Although. The session that we recorded together just went out on Radio 2 this week. Oh, that's awesome. And I have to tell you, the reaction to it has been absolutely fantastic. Oh, good. Tim. Really, really good. Well, thank you for doing that. And we concluded the uh, session with the track, Nashville Without You. And it just reminded me again, what a fantastic song that is. Oh, the observation you. in that song. It's so detailed, isn't it? But it's so warm. Yeah, you know, I think it really paints a picture for you of the history of Nashville, of, of the music industry in Nashville in a lot of ways. And I think that... For us as country musicians, I think that it's being part of a big family and being part of a really, really deep history of music. And, and the roots of that music come all the way back over to, to the U.K., to the Scottish Highlands and, and Irish and, and Welsh coal miners and all that stuff. So That's I, right. There's such a strong connection. Absolutely. Isn't yeah, absolutely. yeah. And um, arriving here now at the O2 for what is your first really major concert here in the UK, isn't it? The first ever. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, you visited here I've before, visited, not played. Not played, yeah, and uh, we've been looking forward to this for a long time. Our band's really fired up and we're excited, so I think there's going to be such a fresh energy tonight that we're really going to enjoy it. Yeah, and this is the front end of what now is going to be 
a pretty long time for you on the road. There's Vegas, isn't there? Is yeah, it, we have, is it, are you playing a sort of season in Las Vegas? Well, we, what we did was we did 10 weekends in Vegas, my wife and I together. And um, we've got two weekends left, the last two weekends of April. And um, it's been great. We've had a great time performing together and being in an intimate room like that and doing some songs that we haven't done in a while. We haven't performed together in a long time. Yeah. So, so it's been really great to do that. And then... After the last weekend, I start my first weekend of my tour in May, the first weekend of May. So it goes rolls right into it, and then we'll be out for, I guess, 40 shows over the summer. But you love it, don't you? I do. I mean, look, I don't think that anybody ever gets into this business. Imagine being in a studio with headphones on, singing the same song over and over and over again. I think we all want to do this because we love being out in front of people and being out in front of you know, 10,000, 20,000 people a night and, and slinging sweat and and playing your guitar and just singing as loud as you can. I think that's the impetus for wanting to do this for a living, and that's what keeps you young in this industry. I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's yeah. a charge, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely. Getting your music out and in front of people. So in terms of then, Tim, thinking about, right, how do we structure the set for London? Mm -hmm. Have you tailored it to the U.K. in, in any way? Uh, yeah, a little. You know, we certainly wanted to introduce some of the things that, that have made us successful over a 20-year career that maybe some of the, the fans in the U.K. haven't heard much and certainly haven't seen live because we haven't played here and maybe not seen anything live on YouTube or anything like that. So we were, wanted to give a taste of sort of what's built our career, but we're also really proud of our new record, and we wanted to really play some stuff off of this new record and, and really let the fans get a load of what that's all about. And so it was quite a mixture in that. And, of course, Nashville Without You is in there because that sort of bridges the gap between what we're doing new and where we've been and what we've done in the past. Yeah, and it does exactly do that, doesn't it? it? And it you're does. quite right, you know, listening to you there with your description of the song and the way that it does express the history of Nashville yeah, and the yeah. warmth and the community spirit of Nashville. Yeah, it's such a great town. I knew when I moved to Nashville in 1989, it's been that long ago when I moved there, but... Uh, I knew that I would be living there no matter what job I had. Of course, I knew I'd be in the music industry if I was having to carry somebody's guitar case on the road. I would do that. But I knew that that's where I wanted to live. And you brought the whole band in with you? Brought the whole band, crew, everybody, whole yeah. family. Yeah. My, my yeah. whole family's here. <laughs> I think they were walking on Bond Street the last I heard, so I'm probably in a bit of trouble. <laughs> it's a good thing I have a show. <laughs> yeah, the card, that card is red hot now. The card's you know? hot, yeah, it's about to melt. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's fantastic to see you here in the UK, and uh, good luck with the concert this evening. And we hope maybe that you'll be back at some stage in the not-too-far-distant future to I'll, do a run of gigs. That I would, would love great. to do that. I'm looking forward to coming back, and I hope this is the start of a, a great relationship with all the folks here in the UK. And it's awesome to be sitting here and talking to a legend like you and, and you know, all the stuff that you've done for music over your career career and, and it's, it's a pretty big deal for me to be able to talk to you it's two times now yeah that's right i'm really starting to get some traction here <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that yeah, yeah. thanks a lot Tim. <laughs>
asking everybody about me. I heard it from a friend of a friend. I heard it from a friend of a friend. Everybody's laughing. Kind of party next week. You'll say I was there when it happened. Coming up on midnight. About time to get gone. And then the DJ starts to play her favorite song. She strolled in for three minutes or so. And then she whispers, baby, let's go. And she slides in and she gives you the green light. You hold on till you turn on. This is gonna be a 
absolutely rocking on stage at the O2. Tim McGraw bringing our programme to a close this week.